Glory to God. We have a good, good Father. Amen. Our Father in heaven is a good, good Father. Yes, He is. We are grateful. We say, hallowed be your name, O oh Lord. Yes. Thank you for today. Thank you for life. Thank you for your gifts of your presence with us. Amen. Thank you, O oh God, for always thinking of us. Yes. We give you praise this morning for giving us the opportunity and the privilege to gather unto you again. Yes, Lord. Unto you is the gathering of your people. Amen. Lord, oh God, we are praying in this few minutes that you will speak your life transforming word to our hearts. Yes, to bring changes to our lives, situations, circumstances. We are asking, oh God, that you will bless us out of Zion. Yes, we know that your word says we go from strength to strength. Every time we appear in Zion before God. Amen. Strengthen everyone today in the name of Jesus. Yes, we ask, oh God, for miracles. Let miracles happen in our lives and our situation. Yes. We give you praise, oh God. Yes, Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, yes. and glorify the name of your son, Jesus. Yes, we thank you, Father. We call it done in Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big, big clap and a big, big shout. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Are we okay? Is that what? We are now. <laughs> All right. Praise God. I welcome everyone to church today. I welcome all those on Zoom. I welcome all those on social media, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching from. We're glad you're part of our service today. This is our Sunday worship service. I want you to know that God has a miracle with your name on it. Amen. Because God is a miracle worker and Jesus is a healer. Amen. You will experience your own desired miracle Amen. in the name of Jesus. Get ready for a miracle in your life. I'm going to be speaking God's word to you in a few moments, and I know that your life will never be the same again. Amen. So I want you to encourage you to please share this broadcast if you are watching us on Facebook or anywhere. Share it so that somebody else can be blessed. Amen. And what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Amen. Let us also know where you're watching from around the world. We're glad you're part of this. You can just leave a comment, and um, if you stay to the end of the service, which I expect you to do, we're going to welcome you in a special way. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's our month of more and more of God's favor because God wants to favor you. Amen. I say God wants to favor you. Amen. The word, the implication of favor means God wants to assist you. Uh -huh. He wants to divinely assist you. When God favors you, it means you're going to enjoy divine assistance. Amen. Favor also implies that God wants to give you special advantages. God wants to give you special advantage in your life. Amen. When favor comes into your life, get ready to experience uncommon special advantage. Amen. Where others are turned down, you will be welcome. Amen. Where others are ignored, you will be recognized. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will be recognized and honored by God. Amen. When God favors you, it may, it implies that you're going to experience preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. Preferential treatment. And God is about to give you preferential treatment. Amen. So today I want to speak to you on the catalyst for favor. The catalyst. God, you know, today is Father's Day. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about the catalyst for favor. And amazingly, you know, um, God is the catalyst for favor. God is the catalyst for favor. We're talking about catalyst, the, the one that causes something to happen. God is the one that causes uncommon favor to happen. Amen. I prophesy uncommon favor will happen in your life. Amen. I say uncommon favor will happen in your life, Amen. on your job, in your career. Amen. One day of favor is what a lifetime of labor. Amen. One day of favor can flavor your life. Yes, sir. Yeah, God, favor is about to happen in your life. Amen. He said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time 
has come. Someone say, my time has come. My time has or say, come. my time for favor has come. Time for Your favor. time for favor has come. Amen. But I want you to know that, you know, favor has a catalyst. Mm. And while we're in school, you know, we're doing chemistry. There's some chemical reaction that will not take place at the rate at which you want it to take place except you add a catalyst. A catalyst is the one that is something that speeds up the reaction or causes something to happen. And God is the catalyst for favor. Amen. God's involvement in your life, in my life, will cause favor to flow into our life. Amen. In fact, the Bible says, every good and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes from the Father of light, the Father of life, with whom there is no variableness, neither is there any shadow of turning. So if God is your Father, you are a candidate for favor. Amen. I say if God is your Father, Amen. you are a candidate for favor. Amen. May the favor of God begin to flow into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say may the favor of God begin to flow into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So, I'm going to share with you some characteristics of favor, you know, because, you know, many people don't understand God or how God operates, so it seems uh, elusive to them. It seems unreal to them. They don't, they don't know some things about him, but if you begin to get into the Word of God, that's why I love the scriptures, that's why I love the Bible, because God has made his will. His person, his personality known to us. Amen. So we're going to see characteristics of favor. How does God make favor to happen in our life? You know, favor will flow when God causes someone to become a problem solver mm. in your life. Favor will flow when God causes someone to become a problem solver in your life. Everybody has a problem. Everybody has a need. You have a desire, a challenge, but you also require somebody to help you. Can I hear an amen? amen? It says, and the good news is that the heart of men are in the hand of the Lord. Yes, so God can always turn somebody's head to help you solve your problems. Amen. I, I want to prophesy. Your problems will begin to find solutions. Amen. You begin to find answers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God can touch anybody's heart to become a problem solver in your life. It could be your relative. It could be your boss. Amen. It could be a family member. Mm -hmm. It could be a stranger. Mm -hmm. But God can touch somebody's heart to become your problem solver. Somebody will just pick interest in you Amen. and want to help you. So favor happens when somebody picks interest in you and decides to become the problem solver. Whatever the problem is, whether it's financial problem, whether it's emotional problem, whether it's spiritual problem. In fact, when a, a person finds a partner, that's why the Bible says, he that finding a wife, finding a good thing, and obtain favor. When you find a partner, you know that your lonely days are over. So if for somebody to even say yes to you as a man, it's because God has taught somebody to be, somebody has to be your helpmate. Amen. Like my wife today, my wife, my wife's birthday is today. Amen. I, I thank God that God gave me favor with my wife that she's decided to be a problem solver in my life. Amen. Since she came into my life, I've not starved. You know, I've been, I've been able to eat good. I've been well taken care of. Amen. You know, I've felt some care and affection from her, Amen. you know, so I celebrate her, so, but God had to touch her, her heart to say yes to marry me, mm -hmm. so I don't take it for granted that God touched her heart because, you know, there are other people who also said no, not even to marry, to be my girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had people who say, you know, you go and you go and go and go and they say, I don't like you, I don't want you, <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with you, you are bothering me, can you leave me alone, we've had that before. So when God, when, when somebody decides to say yes to you or become a problem solver in your life, it's because God has favored you. Amen. God has to touch somebody's heart. Oh, Can I hear you? Amen. amen. To favor you, to become a problem solver in your life. As I'm speaking to you, 
I remember while we're in college, there's a guy. Uh, I don't know whether that was how he was born or what, but it was on the wheelchair. Our friend, I couldn't, I could never, you know, uh, muster the courage to ask him how did he become uh, uh, lame or important because he doesn't have, you know, the limbs from, you know, so it, it's always on the wheelchair, you know. But that guy, even though he's on the wheelchair, I've never seen anybody have more ladies, females <laughs> around him like him. They will be fighting to, you know, help him go places, mm. take him to lecture everywhere. Not guys. Mm. Female. In fact, guys don't even have a chance. Mm. <laughs> you know? So, then we're not, I was going to say, then sometimes even some will stay overnight. So I don't really know what happens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. what I'm saying is that God, when favor happens or favor flows, when God causes someone to become a problem solver in your life. In Daniel chapter number 1 and verse number 9, it is very clear there. The Bible says, Now God has brought Daniel into favor and tender mercy with the prince of the eunuchs. God has brought Daniel into what? Favor. God has brought Daniel into favor. Yes, Daniel was among the captives. They were taking captives from uh, uh, Israel, you know, to Babylon. And they were all supposed to be captives as slaves, no rights. But in that same captivity, mm -hmm. God touched the priest, the man in charge of the eunuchs, to just like Daniel, to, to, you know, when others are treated harshly, he was treated differently with, with a preferential treatment. He was just enjoying divine advantage. The man could even listen to him, you know. When somebody is a slave, even back those days, you don't have a voice, you don't have a right, you have no say. But when somebody can say, this is what I want, and they listen to you, it's because God has given the person favor. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you good? Go on. Amen. Can we switch to the hotel? Are we still on there? So switch it to the person that will leave it there. Amen. Are we back? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Alright, so God brought Daniel, I'm showing to you by the Spirit of God. Yes. I mean, you're back. We're all back. Praise God. Yes. I'm showing to you by the Spirit of God that you know, favor flows when God causes someone you know, to become a problem solver in your life. So God brought Daniel into favor with the priest of the eunuch, even though he was a slave. He began to enjoy uncommon favor. May you enjoy uncommon favor in the name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis 39 verse 21, we saw Joseph also, you know, lied against, thrown into the prison. But the Bible says, the Lord was with Joseph. And what? And where are you? The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. What? In the sight of of the keeper of the prison. Joseph was a prisoner, but God touched the 
heart of the keeper of the prison to just, you know, take a special affection, a lightning, mm -hmm. a favor for Joseph. And he now put Joseph in charge of the other prisoner. Like I said to you, when favor begins to flow, you're going to enjoy special advantages. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. You're going to enjoy preferential treatment. Amen. So, but favor flows because God is the catalyst. So, I want you to know that God is the reason for favor. So, if you want favor to flow in your life, you need to have a connection with God as your father. Amen. And if God is your father, today is Father's Day. Mm -hmm. If God is your father, then, and he's the catalyst of favor, favor will explode in your life. Amen. Begin to enjoy favor in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. You know, life is not a level play playing ground. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't ever assume that everybody is equal in life. No, you know, people say we are all born equal. Forget about that, don't deceive yourself. There are no, nobody, you know, everybody is not born equal. Yes, I can tell you that because even the Bible says, when the sower went to sow the seed, some fell among thorns, some fell on stony ground, some fell, you know, by the wayside. Where you fall determines even how your life becomes. Where you Amen. fall, where you fall. If you are just falling, you know, in into the the by this family right now, <laughs> you you will know that you know that there, there's some kind of favor you enjoy. Amen. That's talking about the president. You know, so where you fall, and some people fell somewhere, but the good news is that you can fall into the hand of God. That's yes. what David said. David said, so that's what can bring you into power with anybody in life. Amen. If you fall into the family of God, that makes all the difference. Yes, you know, God, David had a problem, and God said, choose, should I deliver you to this, or should I deliver you? I said, no, God, let me fall in your hand. Let me fall into the family of God because once you become a child of God, you, God becomes your father. The judge of the whole earth becomes your father. The catalyst of favor becomes your father. Everything will begin to work in your life. Amen. And I see everything begin to work in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I see, I see favor flowing into your life in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Another characteristic of favor, number two, is that favor is a gift from God. Yes, sir. And it can be stopped if it is not recognized. Wow. Yes. Favor is a gift from God. And if you don't recognize it and appreciate even the source, then it can dry up. Hmm. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about favor stoppers. Hmm. Praise God. Wow. <laughs> Things that can stop favor. But recognize that God is the source. You know, God does not owe you anything. He doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't Amen. owe nobody anything. And people are not obligated to you. Yes, sir. You need to know that God does not owe you. Some people have a sense of entitlement. Yeah. God does not owe you anything. Amen. People are not uh, people are not obligated to do anything for you. If anybody does anything for you, it's because God amen. has touched their heart. Thank you, Can I hear amen? amen? Yes. Yes, yesterday I was just thinking, you know, I was sitting and I walked my wife, you know, she was going to do something for me, even though today was her birthday, and somebody was saying, why won't you give her, why won't you cut her a slack because it's her birthday? I said, no, because that's a gift that she loves to do it. So I just allow her not influence. I was telling the person, leave my wife alone. <laughs> you know? But I thought about it that what she does for me and the things she helped me to do most times, she doesn't have to do that. There are wives right. who don't care about their husband. Amen. Say, even to feed. Say, I'm hungry. Say, yeah. What, what do I care about that? <laughs> what, what do I care about that? Amen. I had somebody say to me, I woke up one morning, after my wedding, and I said to and I, my wife was by my side, and I said to her, the night, the night of their wedding, the, the day after their wedding, he said, I said to her, I looked at her and I said, good morning, after a while, because when I woke up, I was expecting, since I decided to marry her, she, and we had a wonderful time, she's not my wife, I expected her courtesy because she woke up to say hi. And she never said anything. I was watching her. So I finally said to her, How are you doing today? He said, I'm fine. He, said, he didn't say hello to me. He said, Why should I say hello to you? Oh. Why should I say hello to you? Wow. He said, He, he was shocked. <laughs> Why should I say hello to you? For what? Wow. He said, But I expect you to honor your husband. He said, No, 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 no. 
If you greet me, I respond to you. If you don't greet me, don't expect me to greet uh-huh. you. <laughs> the night after the <laughs> I couldn't believe when he told me. Wow. Yeah. So you see, people are not obligated to you. Wow. Yeah. So favor can stop. <laughs> but the good news about favor is that men can stop it. Mm. Amen. Only God can cause it to happen Amen. and only God can stop it. Yes. When men don't want to favor you, whether they like it or not, they will favor you. Amen. I say whether they like it or not, they will favor you. Amen. God said to the children of Israel, he said, I will cause the, the Egyptians to give you everything you require. Yeah. Yes. Everything you require. They don't have to like you nope. for them to favor you. Amen. But God is the one that can stop it. Yes. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, you need to know how to treat God as a father, treat him well. Amen. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, it said, I am he that openeth, and no man can shut. And I am he that shut it, and no man can open. Amen. So if there is anyone you need to uh, appease for favor, it's not necessarily men, amen. but God. Can I hear you, amen? Yeah, how do some people say, I don't like you, <laughs> I don't like your face, I don't like your attitude, but something is telling me to help you. Amen. I know that something that is telling you to help me. Amen. It is God. May something begin to tell somebody amen. to help you at the point of your need. May something begin to tell somebody to, to, to help you at the point of your need. We know for people, but I just feel like doing it, do it, and let me go. Amen. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Yes, favor is flowing in my life. Amen. I say favor is flowing in my life. Amen. May favor flow in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you begin to enjoy uncommon favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Father. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron even to Gath and the coast thereof did Israel deliver out the did Israel deliver out of the hands of the Philistines and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. You see, in the days of uh, Samuel, they, when somebody take your city, hmm. for him to restore it, hmm. it requires war. But when the favor of God is upon you, they will easily restore what they've taken from amen. you. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. I say, may the favor begin to speak in your life. Amen. All right? But your favor will not stop in the name of amen. Jesus Christ. So recognize God. You know, anything, any, if you don't recognize your source, you're going, to, the, the, you're going to dry up. A river that does not recognize its source is going to dry up. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Yeah, don't ever say you don't need God in your life because mm-hmm. your uh, uh, despising of God is not to your advantage. You're not having anything to do with God. Is the reason why life might be hard. He said the ways of transgressors are hard. But God doesn't want you to have, you don't have to live a hard life. Amen. You can enjoy ease and comfort in your life. Amen. But the secret to enjoying ease and comfort in your life is to make sure that your relationship with God is not tempered with. Amen. That's wisdom. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. That's your wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, I'm showing us the characteristics of favor. Number three characteristics of favor is that uncommon favor is only guaranteed to those who qualify through obedience to God. Wow. Yes. Uncommon favor is only guaranteed, you know, to those who qualify through their obedience to God. One of the things I found out, my personal discovery, and I can share with you in scripture, that God is so interested in people obeying him and keeping his commandment, mm. walking in his statutes. There is nothing like, there is nothing that even, you know, uh, delights the heart of God like that. Everywhere you see in scripture, when God is saying, if you keep my commandment, walk in my statutes, I will do everybody he's talking to. One of he doesn't tell them, 
lick my, I mean, lick my feet, do it, just keep my commandment, right. walk, in, walk in my statutes, and, you know, do my judgment. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, favor is for those who, uh, favor is guaranteed for those who qualify through their obedience to God. Their obedience to God. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, the Bible says, if it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which he command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. You as an individual, God can set you on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you and prophesy that blessings will begin to come upon you Amen. and overtake you in the name of Jesus. The flow of blessings into your life is the flow of favor. Amen. The flow of blessing is the flow of favor. Amen. And may the blessings of God flow into your life. Amen. Flow into every aspect of your life. But the key to enjoying the flow of blessing is to obey his commandment. And the Bible says the commandments of God are not grievous. Amen. They don't grieve you. Yes. There is nothing God ever tells you to do that is uh, that will bring ad 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 adverse effect to your life. It doesn't hurt. I don't know anything God tells you to do that will hurt you. In fact, what God tells you to do that you don't do is what brings the hardship and that, that's what hurts you. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Yes, oh yes. This commandment are not given. Someone say, oh, God say, okay, do not commit adultery or fornication. You think adultery or fornication is good? Go and commit it and see. Okay. Then you come and contact HIV, you contact STD, you go, you get you get uh, heartbroken, you you know things just go bad. Amen. Yes, they hurt you, then they you be, your heart is broken, and that's why God, God was trying to help you. Mm. The commandments of God are not grievous. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Father. He said, "Love your neighbor. If you don't love your neighbor." You will be the one that will be suffering. Your neighbor might not even know it. Mm -hmm. You have a problem with your neighbor, and you are angry, you are bitter against your neighbor, and then every time you see your neighbor, everything will be working for your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And now you are, you are hurting yourself. So why don't you just let the thing go, forgive, and move on, and enjoy your life? Mm -hmm. You know, bitterness doesn't hurt, or unforgiveness doesn't hurt the person mm -hmm. you are, you know, you are hurt against. It hurts you. The person who is hot more. Yes, sir. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the commandments of God are not grievous. I mean, I, I'm trying to just think what is it that God commands. I'm trying to find an example of a commandment of God that is so great you can't keep or we can't keep. I'm thinking of one. Also, I'm thinking of all this, uh, you know, what it is. But in the name of Jesus, that's not your portion. Amen. Our portion is to enjoy the blessings of God. Amen. And I see the blessings of God flowing into your life. Amen. I, see, I see the blessings of God flowing into your life. Amen. So when the blessings of God begin to flow into our life, favor will be flowing into your life. Amen. And that's because God will cause favor. He said, when the way of a man pleases the Lord, he makes even all his enemies to be at peace with him. Yes. Number four, uncommon favor is not an accident. It's a deliberate design to reward you for acts of obedience that are invisible to others. Hmm. Uncommon favor is not an accident. When you enjoy favor, favor doesn't happen by chance. Hmm. Favor is not an accident. Yeah, favor is a deliberate design of God to reward every act of your obedience that are not invisible to others. Whenever you begin to obey God and enjoy, I mean, obey his instructions, do his bidding, God is going to reward you with favor. People might not know what you have done, but God that sees in the secret will reward you in the open. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. So, favor. This is important for us to know these characteristics of favor because God wants to favor you. Amen. It's your time for favor. Amen. I say it's your time for favor. Your set time for favor amen. has come, but favor is not an accident. It's a deliberate design to reward you for the acts of your obedience which are invisible to others. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. Amen. Good or bad? Yes, yes. Good or bad? Whatever you sow, you will reap. Amen. So, do good things so that God can bless. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, and I want you to give me the, I want us to see the uh, TPT. Isaiah 1 verse 19. The uh, Passion Translation. I want, you, I want you to see a powerful truth here very clearly said. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19. You don't have it on your own system. Okay, I have it. I'll read it. He said, if you have a willing heart to let me help you. God is saying, if you have a willing heart to let me help you. If you obey me, you will feast on the blessings of abundant harvest. Yes. You will feast on the what? The blessings of abundant harvest. That, that uh, the King James says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The passion translation, if you have a willing heart to let God help you, if you obey him, you will feast on the blessings of abundant harvest. May I prophesy that you begin to feast on the blessings of abundant harvest. Amen. I say you're going to begin to feast on the blessings of abundant harvest Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are saying that favor is an, uh, it's a, it's not an accident, it's a deliberate design of God to reward you for acts of obedience that are invisible to others. In Ruth chapter 2 from verse 11, the Bible says, when Ruth found favor, we saw this also clearly explicitly stated, Ruth 2, 11. When Ruth found favor with Boaz, she fell on her face and she asked Boaz, how come you are favoring, 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 uh, favoring me uh, this way? How come you are bestowing such favor unto me? What is making you favor me like this? What's making you favor me like this? Why? I'm a stranger, you don't know me. You just favor me. You know, then Boaz answered and said unto her, It has what been fully showed me all that you have done unto thy mother in law since the death of your husband, and how you know thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of your nativity, and have come unto a people which thou knowest not thereof. The Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. So Boaz was only fulfilling the counsel of God. So he was speaking by the Spirit of God. And look, Ruth, you treated, you sowed seed of kindness. You did something to help your mother-in-law. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you left your own country to trust her God. You came because the Moabites are unbelievers. You came to trust in the living God. Oh my God. So God is rewarding you. People don't know. But I believe Boaz was a prophet, a spiritual person. He could discern that this is God. So he was speaking prophetically. Amen. So favor is not an accident. It wasn't just an accident because she wasn't the only one that has been going to that field. Right. Yeah, favor is not an act. It's a deliberate design of God. So everything you are doing, God says, I say, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, which you have shown towards his name, in that you minister to the saints and you do continue to minister. You continue to serve him. God sees and is going to reward you Amen. with favor. Amen. People might people might not know, but God, you know, God sees everything. Yes. Oh, that's the beauty of it. God, God is the so, so, sovereign God. He can see everything. Amen. So he sees you when you are doing things nobody can see. That's why, you know, what you do in secret, you know, one day, somebody say one day. One day. <laughs> one day I was talking to God about a certain member of our church because the person was not changing. In, in as much as I was praying for the person, I was praying and I took, you know, Special like in, a, you know, in that person to want to see the person succeed. But the person was not succeeding. That's unusual to me because once you are serving God and your heart is with God and you're loving God, God will bless you. But she's the love of God. 
And she comes around and she was doing many things. So I, I, so I was praying. Her story was, so I went to God. I said, God, I don't understand what's going on. It said to me, she's double-faced. She's two-faced. I said, two-faced? Yeah. He said, she has two separate characters and life. I said, hey, what does that mean? He said, yeah. She's one thing here, another thing. So I can't place her and I can't bless her because of that. Wow. Yes. Hmm. You know, it's not good to say this, but if you want to serve God, serve him fully. Yes, if you don't want to serve God, serve the yes, devil fully so that at least if the devil is going to kill you, let him kill you well. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Let him, let him roast you and do what I want to do. But if you want to serve God, let him serve you. So don't have one leg in, one leg out, you know. Yeah, you are neither with God or neither with the devil. You, are, you can't be placed. It's a very dangerous because if God is not, God can't help you against the devil. The, de <laughs> the devil also is obstructing the blessings of God in your life. So it's not good. So the Lord told me, say, ask her. So, you know, I, I said, well, I don't understand, but well, I'm, I, so I called her, I said, please, I want to say something, please don't be, don't be angry with me, you know, because we pastors now, we, we, when we say some things, we get into, we, we get different reactions. I said, I've been praying for you, I want you to be well with you, and that's the truth, I want you to be well with you. But the Lord told me there's some things I don't know about you, that's why your story has not changed. Is it true, or is it me that heard wrongly? Then she bowed her head for a minute and she said, You are a man of God, you know. I said, Oh, wow, okay. I said, What you are saying is the truth. I said, Really? I said, You see, I said, I have I'm another person at other times. I said, Okay. <laughs> and when I heard the full gist, I was afraid. <laughs> oh, that's the fast, fa that's how fast I've been able to tell anybody about this discussion. <laughs> Not even my wife, my wife, my wife has tried. I said, no, that's as, as far as I can tell, that's far as, it's good for your, for your salvation not to know some of the things. Yeah, because it took me time to recover, so I don't want to put the same problem on you. So just leave it like that. But what, what, what I said is that, oh, whatever we do, Favor is not an accident. So sometimes if you check your life and you are not seeing favor of God, it's not that God is punishing you or God is judging you. You try and check what are you doing. Yeah. Yeah. When you, you know, I think I don't know if I've mentioned that. Favor is a seed. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we've dealt with that. Favor is a seed. Like whatever a man sow. So, yeah. Do act, do good things. Sow good seed of favor. Favor the things of God. You know, when you don't favor the things of God, God cannot, you know, favor your things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But may God begin to favor you in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. May God begin to favor you in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. I want to say a whole lot of things in my spirit, but I want to go further. Let me leave this. May God give you wisdom and Amen. grace to know. We're saying that favor is not an accident. It's a deliberate design, you know, to reward you for your acts of obedience that are invisible to others. When you are obeying God, even people don't have to see it. Yes, sir. Many people have uh, eye service. They right. do things for people to see. But behind, they are different. Right. But what you need to be is to be good on God's side. Yes, sir. Let the people even think you are bad. Right. But let God know you are good. Amen. And let God know your, your stand. Yes, sir. Yes, let God know your stand. Make, make, one time, you know what? When, when I started church, when I, go to, when I was in church, my pastor, my father in the Lord, my bishop, I don't talk to him, I don't converse with him one on one, I go to talk to him, no. But I serve in the church, I serve. Whenever I see something that needs to be done, I go and get it done. I go and get it done. And somehow, he likes me. When we're together, I don't talk about what I do, I don't even say anything, I don't even, I, I just keep quiet, I just watch. But anything that will help the church, I was doing it. I was doing it. That's how God even brought me to where I am today. Mm. Yeah. Because the things I was doing in the secret, he doesn't know. 
But I'm not doing it to him. He said, yeah, yeah. He says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart, not as unto men, but as unto God. Yes. So God is the one. This you are doing for God, what nobody sees, God will reward you. Amen. Big time, and I want to prophesy, big time reward is going to come into yeah. your life. You're going to see that God is the one rewarding you. Amen. Yeah, as a, even as a pastor, as a man of God, as a man of God, you can be cutting corners. You can just be there, you know, not be doing your job, not praying, not reading, not studying, not interceding, not doing anything. You know, I come outside, you can get the scripture and all, all manner of, ooh, 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 be, 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 you know. God sees. God sees, you know, God sees. Many times I've seen that. I've seen that happen in my life. Mm. <laughs> I've seen that happen in my life. God will just tell me that, look, I see you. <laughs> you know, one day somebody was passing through our church while we were there. It just a, a, a brother sent me a text. He said, faithful man of God, always at your duty post. It didn't enter. It just, it passed. He said, I'm just passing by that was in the night. It's a faith, it wasn't church day. It's a faithful man of God, always at the daily post. So when I found out, I said, I see you, I pass here every time because as a full time, I, I, I'm, at, I'm on my job. You know, the job, you don't have your supervisor that is physical. Yeah. You can <laughs> cut all kind of corners. Yeah, you are the, nobody's going to your, your supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's on you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, sometimes people come and say, are you sleeping? I say, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm sleeping, I just woke up. I just woke up. <laughs> Am I disturbing? I say, no, I'm awake now since you have called. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> I'm awake more than you that you think you're doing a circular job. More awake than you. Amen. Spend more hours than you. That's the yeah. truth. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, people think the pastor is just to come and, you know, just come and preach one sermon a day. You are wasting your time. You are not deceiving yourself. Yeah. I mean, nobody, even all the people in my house that live with me, I work more than them. I'm awake before they awake, before they wake up. I'm working when they go when they, when they go to work. They come back and meet me. I'm still working late into the night when they go to sleep. Then when they talk to me, they say they told nobody can even tell me anything about tired or anything. No, no. <laughs> because they can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Amen. <laughs> Try and sit and sit down and try to read the Bible for 20, I mean for, for 10, 12 hours and see and pray in between for another four or five hours and see how you're gonna be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every day. Amen. You're gonna know what God is saying to you. Because <laughs> some of you go to your job, eight hours you're already closed. Me, I don't have closing hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say 40 hours a week. Ah, my own, I don't even know how many hours it is a week. <laughs> but God that said in the secret will reward you in the open. Amen. You have to have that kind of heart. Even on your job, when you go there, don't just watch, don't walk when your boss is there. Walk until, yeah. walk when nobody sees you and walk well. Amen. Oh, my time is flying. Huh? Number five, <laughs> are you getting blessed? Amen. Yeah, what, what point were we on? We said that favor. It's not an accident, but it's a deliberate design of God to reward you for acts of obedience which are not visible to others. Number five, characteristics of favor is that favor can make you wealthy overnight. Amen. The favor of God can make you wealthy overnight. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I said the favor of God can make you wealthy overnight. Amen. Yes. Remember Ruth? We just talked about Ruth. Ruth that went to the field of Boaz as a widow. Mm -hmm. And the man just took, you know, interest in her. Mm -hmm. She was a peasant widow. He was the richest man in the block. Mm -hmm. His house was on the hill with all these orchards and everything was there. He was living large. Suddenly, after he found Ruth, in Ruth 2, Verse number 12, it said, The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward of the Lord of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing thou hast come. A full reward be given you. So he told her to come into the field after she has, you know, found the favor. And he thought that was all. But the Lord said, No, you're not done on the assignment. 
You have to take her to be your bride. Mm. So in Ruth 4 13, the Bible says, He married her. Mm. Boaz married Ruth. The rich man married the poor lady. Overnight, mm. she became instantly wealthy. Amen. Yes. Because now she is the wife of the richest man in town. Mm. The favor of God can make you wealthy overnight. Somebody said the favor of God. So overnight you can become an overnight success Amen. by the favor of God. Amen. Maybe you'll see Ruth say hey, she was going on, on uh, you know going on the street, get, you know, entering some buses, you know, couldn't doesn't have a right, trek all the distance, and the next time you saw her coming. She's, in, she's behind the limo. <laughs> and the, 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 the driver comes to open the door. You say, oh, is she the new maid? <laughs> no, she's not the new maid. But when you saw the dressing mm. and the way she was attired, you know that this is not a maid. This yeah. is the real mama of the house. <laughs> God has answered Ruth. May God answer you. I said, may God answer you. May God turn your story around. Amen. By his favor, Amen. be wealthy. May you receive wealth overnight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the sermon that broke the internet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is it gone again? All right. God is good to Amen. be restored. <laughs> Shaka Lakata. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Number six, favor can stop a tragedy instantly in your life. Favor. God can you know, release his favor and cause a tragedy to instantly stop in your life. And I want to prophesy to you today. If there's any tragedy in your life, difficulty, it will stop Amen. now. I say it will stop now by the favor of God. I say it will stop now by the favor of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we steal the storms and the tragedies of your life Amen. by the favor of God. You know, Joseph was put in prison and God gave Pharaoh a dream in order to bring Joseph out. Hello, somebody. I say God gave Pharaoh a dream in order to bring Joseph out. Yes. Genesis 41 verse 14. They brought him out hastily out of the dungeon. Wow. A person in dungeon was brought out hastily. And before you know it, it was the next in command in the land. By the favor of God. May that favor begin to work in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The favor of God also you know, save a cause a whole nation to be saved through Esther. Through Esther. In Esther chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. The nation of the, the nation of the Jewish people, the, the Jewish nation or the citizens of that nation were supposed to be, you know, uh, exterminated. But by the favor of God, that injunction was cancelled mm. overnight. And the same Jew, Jewish people who were supposed to be killed were suddenly promoted. They were suddenly put in charge of provinces and places. Are you all right? It's not one. All right, praise God. All right. Is it, is it back? But we're good on Zoom. All right, let's keep going. We, go, we can get it to the Facebook people later. So look at it now. That's Esther chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Let's look at one more. Favor is often the only exit from the place of bondage and captivity. Favor is the only what? Exit from the place of bondage and captivity. So when you feel trapped, when a person is in bondage or you feel trapped, one of the things that can easily get you out is the favor of God. Mm. When Joseph was put in prison, he did many good things, and the people he helped, who were important people, he told them to remember him, but they forgot about him. Mm -hmm. 
But when the favor of God showed up for him, they remembered him. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. He said the king sent and loosed him. In Genesis chapter 41, verse 9 to 14, the butler who Joseph interpreted his dream said, I remember my faults today. After his boss had a challenge, he knew now that, look, they were all going to be in trouble. Hmm. And the person that has the solution is the person that helped him one time and he has forgotten. In the name of Jesus Christ, I see God staring hearts, yes, people Lord. where you have been forgotten. Amen. People will begin to remember you. Amen. People will remember their fault. As many as want to help you, to do you good, to help you move forward in life, Amen. God will touch their heart and Amen. bring them to remembrance Amen. of the good they ought to do to you. Amen. I say that God will bring them to remembrance of the good they ought to do to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father. That's what favor will do. Favor, favor steers many things in your favor. Yes, it steers remembrance in the heart of people for you. Yes. It makes people to, you know, rethink what they've done against you. Mm. Yeah. And as this time is, as the deal of favor is coming on your life, people will begin to rethink in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get ready, watch out in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't begin to see uncommon kindness. Amen. People begin to call you. They begin to ask for forgiveness. Amen. They begin to ask you to come, you know, to come around and just, you know, forgive them, pray for them. Okay. Don't, that is not the time for you to want to take vengeance. Okay. It's the time for you to open up your heart Open up your hand and receive what they carry. I say receive the favor they carry. What the goodness they have for you in the name of Jesus Christ. May that become your story. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, it will happen for you speedily. Now, how can we get this uncommon favor from God in our lives? How can we activate it? How can we steer it? How can we provoke it? How can we stimulate this favor? The favor from God has to be pursued. You have to learn to pursue God for this kind of favor. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Learn to what? Pursue God. Pursue God to favor you. Pursue God to show you favor. You know, the Bible says, God is a faith God. He said, he that come to God was must believe. So go to God in faith. Believe that is, uh, he exists, that favor comes from him, and that what is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes, diligent pursuit, diligent seeking God, diligently seeking God can cut favor, can cut us favor with God, or can cut us into favor with God. Diligently seeking God. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6. So we have to pursue the favor of God. You have to pursue it. Once you have heard about it and God can make it happen, then go to him. I love what the Bible says in Psalm 119 from verse 57 and 58. It says, Not thou art my portion, O God. You are my portion. I have said, I will keep thy words. I will obey your commandment. That's what I'm saying. And I entreat your favor with the whole of my heart. Somebody say with the whole of my heart. With the whole of, with the whole of my heart. Yes, you are my portion. You are the one. You are the source of my favor. So I'm committed to keep your word, to delight in your commandment because you are my source of favor and I entreat your favor with the whole of my heart. Somebody said the whole of my heart. The whole of my heart. You know, every plan of God is to bring us to a place that will come closer to him. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are the thoughts of peace, thoughts of good, thoughts of favor, not of evil, to help you, to assist you. It says, then you shall go and pray unto me. Right? You shall go, verse, 11, verse 12, you shall go and pray unto me and I will hack him unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me what with all your heart your heart must be engaged in the pursuit i want god to favor me there is nothing i want more in my life than to enjoy the favor of god yeah because one day of favor can 
contaminate or can replace is better than a lifetime of labor. Amen. And the truth is that you can never work hard enough in life to get everything you need. You need God's favor. God's favor that took Joseph from the prison to become a prime minister. It can shoot you on high. He said, the Lord your God will set you up above all nations of the earth. So, and treat God, if there is something you need to pursue, I'm giving you the wisdom of God by the truth of God. Pursue God's favor with Amen. all your heart, all desire. I want God to favor me. Amen. I want God to favor me. I want the faith, the due of favor to be on my life. Amen. Yes, I want to please God so I can enjoy the favor of God. Amen. Yeah, I don't want to just live anyhow. You know, I saw something on social media. I wanted to respond, but I kept quiet. I, because I don't know the person. The person said, ah, I found free religion. I'm free now. That so I want so people are commenting, say, yeah, me too. I think they used to go to church, but now they've left church, so they're saying now they're under grace, so they are free. I said, who kept you in bondage? <laughs> if you go to church, who kept you in bondage? What are, is serving God a bondage? What so why, why are you in bondage? Why why do you think coming to church is a bondage? What is what is the bondage about I will see on on door? What 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 what's 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 bondage? What's bondage in coming to church? What what's the bondage in serving God? Is is serving God a burden? That now you are not saying you found free, um, you are under grace. What is grace? Grace doesn't mean license to sin. Grace doesn't mean we could disobey God's word and not please him and honor him. That's not what grace is. Grace means God helping us Amen. in our desire to please him. Not God helping us in our desire to sin against him. That's not grace. Are you listening? That's not grace. Amen. Which one is come from God? You need an intense desire. You need an intense desire. You need what? An intense desire. desire. Somebody says intense desire. Intense desire. This dimension of favor to flow through intense desire. Desire fires up, you know, what you acquire. In Psalm 37 verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and it will grant, grant you the, the desires, desires of your, your heart. heart. Do you desire favor? Mm. Then you know, delight yourself in God. Then he will grant you the desires of your heart. Amen. In Psalm 145, from verse 15 to 16, it says, the, what is the proof of desire? It says, the eyes of all wait upon thee. The eyes of all wait upon thee to give them their meat in due season. And what is our meat for this season? The meat of favor. The meat of favor, the eyes of all wait upon it to give them their meat in, in, in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfy what? The desire of every living being. Desire favor. Want favor in your life. You know, I've heard people say, I don't want any favor from anybody. I don't want anybody to help me. Why would you not want anybody to help you in your life? Why would you not want God to help you? That, I mean, is that pride or what? Yeah, okay. You, you said that, you know, but <laughs> what am I, you know, but you need to have favor. Have favor. Have favor. Seek favor from God. Amen. Desire it. Desire to be favor. And one of the proof of desire is your prayer. Yeah. Anything we want to get from God, we can only acquire it through prayer. Amen. Through talking. Through talking to God. You know, don't expect God to know what you want or what you are thinking. You have to tell him. Yes, sir. That's why I say, ask and you shall receive. He right. didn't say, think and you shall get. No, no he said, ask. So you have to tell him in the place of prayer. Yes, That's why we spend time praying. Amen. Learn to pray, to spend time with God, because you desire favor. Yes, you desire favor. Favor sometimes, you know, is invisible. Sometimes when you spend time in God's presence, the favor of God rubs on you. Right. The goodness of God, the, the shakana glory of God, the aroma or the fragrance of his presence rub on you. If you go around people who smoke, <laughs> even though you don't smoke, when you stay in a room where somebody has been smoking, when you come out of that place, they will say, man, you are smelling like you've been smoking weed or something. Mm. You say, no, I don't smoke. They say, no, you all smoke like up. It. 
Why? Because you stay there long. If you go in the presence of God, the favor of God, the goodness of God will f- overshadow you. Amen. So when you go out, people just want to do you good. Yes, sir. Yeah, because nobody can see God and turn him down. Right. I'm telling you, nobody can see God and refuse him. Nobody. Most people will talk about God, you know, bad. It's that God has not seen him. Once they see God, Paul, uh, the, the, who, who was Saul, they are before he became Paul, the apostle, he was killing the disciples of Jesus. He was very mean. The day he saw God on the road, Jesus appeared to him. When he lifted up his, when he fell off his horse, his high horse of pride, he got up. The first thing he said, he said, "Who are you, Lord?" So he knew that that is Lord. when you see God, this awesomeness <laughs> will scare you. You, yeah, you can't say no to God. So when a person carries the presence of God, the person also enjoys that same kind of favor that people can't say no to you. They just want to help you. They just want what 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 do you have me do? May that favor begin to speak Amen. on your life. So the second thing is desire number three. As let me round up, you know, because of our internet, you know, doing good today. Number three um, is what. To regain this uh, dimension of favor is to engage in tireless, persistent prayer. Tireless, what? Persistent and consistent prayer to God. Amen. If there's only one thing you need, if <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was a, what do you need in your life? Oh, I need a job. <laughs> you are joking. Oh, I need one million dollars. You are joking. What you need is the favor of God. Amen. The only thing you need in your life mm. to be successful, the main thing you need is the favor of God. Amen. I tell you, take it from me. Yes, and if, if you realize that's the only thing you need, you will rather spend time. That's what David said. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know? So, and the Bible says, you shall pray unto God and it shall be favorable unto you. Psalm, uh, uh, Job 33, 26. You shall pray unto God and it shall be what? Favorable unto you. So, consistent prayer, persistent prayer, insistent prayer, in Luke 11, verse 8, we saw the man that wanted his friend to give him a loaf of bread in the parable that Jesus gave and the Amplified Version. He said the man went and began to knock on the door and his friend said, by this time I'm sleeping. I can't help you. I can't favor you. I can't do anything. You know, my children are in bed. Go home. Go. Go away. We can't help you. It's, it's late. Go. We've closed. Whatever. He said, but because this man, you know, because of his what? Shameless persistence and insistence. He will get up and give him what? As much as he needed. So you can have much favor in your life Amen. by your prayer life. Amen. I mean, that persistent prayer, not hit and run, persistent. You stay there and keep talking to God. Keep talking until he hears you, until you see signs of favor. Don't just say, I've talked to God. No, that's not the goal. You want to begin to see your life change. Amen. You want favor to surround you. So you keep praying until you see the manifestation. Amen. You know That's the proof of your desire. The person you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And there's only one thing we need to do is to pray Amen. to God. That's how we get anything from God. Pray without ceasing. Pray persistently, insistently and you're going to see your story change. Amen. So tarry in the place of prayer. Tarry in the place of prayer. I want to give you a, a story, but I don't know whether I should give it or, you know, but it's coming <laughs> my mind. But I'll just go ahead and not say it. <laughs> you know, many years ago, let me say this is coming my, you know, many years ago, you know, it's my own story. It's not, not very, not, you know, it's not, it's a kind of funny story. Many years ago, I, I, I happened to know a millionaire that was living in our neighborhood. And then, you know, I was going to college, and there was, we had financial challenges. My mom had financial challenges there. So I was thinking, what can I do? So it just occurred to me that if I can write a letter to this millionaire, 
He might help me and give me a scholarship or do something to help me to go to school. So I wrote my letter. I went to his house. His house has camera everywhere. I will go in the morning. I will stay there from morning to night. He, the, the security will even come out to say anything to me. I will go again, stay. I stay. I never got to see the man, but I learned something that I stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed. And stayed. Because I'm looking, if this man can just give me a scholarship, my soul is standing, you know. <laughs> because I'm like, I don't have money. I just say, look, let me just meet one million. So I just know this is, the, this is the help I need. This is the help I need. Now I've come, to, I wasn't born again then, I was a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I was a non believer. But now I've come to realize that, look, the same way, the only person I need in my life to change my story is it's God. God. <laughs> so. I'm going to be with him. I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to seek him. And he's going to change my story. And he has been doing it. Yes, sir. And he's going to change your story, Amen. too. You know, yeah, I said it's going to change your story. Amen. I said it's going to change your story. Amen. Yeah, you see me, I'm telling you my story. You do have your own story. You might never tell us, but I'm telling you why. But I'm telling you that once you persist, shameless, you see, you see, shameless, shameless. So people say, oh, when I told my friend, say, how can you be standing with, with, in the house of that uh that uh, he called him a name, I wouldn't even want to call him. Mm. That thief. I say, well, I don't know whether that's a thief or not. Right now, <laughs> I need help. <laughs> ah, and the police have not come to arrest him, so I don't, I don't know whether it's it. I don't know where you got your own story from. <laughs> Finally, there's a man in scripture, uh, Genesis 24. We saw a story there. The, the, the assistant or the servant of Abraham. Abraham was a great man. Mm. He had a servant, and Abraham wanted his servant to go find a wife for his son Isaac. You know, so he said to the man, You have to go to my country where I came from and find a wife from my family people. There was no internet then, there was no Facebook, nothing. You know, I should just go to a country where you came from and go to your family member. Do you, do you have their home address? No, I don't know where their home address. Can you imagine just going to a country, you don't know how to address, and you're looking for somebody. So the man knew it was an impossible task. Mm. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. So what did he do? To find a wife and to bring him, and the man had to take, the, the master told him to take an oath. I will not just go to another different place and just get a wife, a lady anyway, and say, oh, this is your, <laughs> this, this is your, this is from your country. No, 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 no. He took an oath. Then he went. The Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 10. So the man took 10 camels of the camels of his master. You know, like 10 cars or buses or whatever it is those days. And departed for and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia. You know, to the city of now. And he made his camel kneel down without the city by the well. At the time of the evening, the time when women go out to draw water. So look at look at his strategy. He knew he needed favor. He needed help. This mission is mission impossible. The only way I can get this mission possible is to pray to God. So he said, "Oh Lord God of my master, I pray you, please send me good speed. Don't let me suffer through my life. Don't let me come, you know, finish my food." Finish my drink, the camels don't have food, and we can't we have not found this person's family. How do we do this? Show me kindness, favor, show kindness unto my master. Then look what happened. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of this city will come out to draw water. Let it come to pass, O oh God, that the damsel. I just need one one person. I just need a miracle. Oh my God, God will give you a miracle. Amen. I said God will give you a special favor. Amen. You just need one touch, one open door, one blessing from God for your story to change. Amen. In this season, you will get it. Amen. I prophesy you will get it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That connection, that golden connection, you will get it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let it come to pass that the dancer whom I say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink. That means give me favor. And I will give thy camel's drink also. Let the same be she that has appointed to thy servant Isaac. 
And thereby shall I know that you have what? Shown sure. kindness unto my master. Can you imagine? Of all the women that can come, let it be the one I speak to. And that's probability, right? That's what some people are living for. Their probability is on lottery. <laughs> if I win the jackpot, let me just win the jackpot. So their own probability is they go <laughs> and they buy cards. <laughs> I was one day, I was, I, oh, people are funny, many people don't, don't have, don't know nothing. I was by the store one of the days I was preaching, I was giving people a flyer, they come to buy the lottery card. So the guy was like going in, I told him, I said, I, told, I gave him a track, track, I said, this is a sure one. He just collected it, he just dropped it. I just looked at him, I said, how dumb thou art. <laughs> I gave you the lot, the real number, J-E-S-U-S. -E mm. It never fails. Never. Jesus said, whatever shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. It never fails. It, it, it will succeed faster Amen. than that lottery. Amen. I tell you the truth. Yeah. You can become a millionaire faster than any other group of people playing lottery. If you know how to get to the heart of God, yes, sir. what you need is to say, This man, the whole ladies in the city, let it be the one that I ask. Mm. He sets the uh, markers that if I say this, let us say this. Let, that's probability. The number is very, <laughs> very low. Mm. Yeah, one in a million. But guess what? The Bible says, and it came to pass that before he has done spring, hmm. before Rebecca came, who was born to Bethlehem, who said God is not alive? Who said God is not alive? Who said God is not real? How come he prayed? That's why the Bible is telling us his story that the man prayed. And just as he finished praying, God prophesied on time answers to your prayer. Every time you pray, God said, before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. God will hear you in the morning. He will hear you in the evening. He will hear you on Monday. He will hear you on Tuesday. He will hear you through the week. He will hear you through the month. Sudden, quick, quick response. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, he's a good, good father. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. And to God, the long story short, within hours, Rebecca was bound or was on a route to meet Isaac, her husband, just by the favor of God. You will not tore her all night to get what you want. The favor of God will bring both sinking, net breaking, speed of accomplishment into your mission in life. I prophesy. In the name of Jesus, the favor of God will bring speed of accomplishment into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth now and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, Lord, favor me. Favor me. Show me favor. You are my father. My father, my father. My father, my father. My father, my father. Favor me, oh God. Favor my life. Let this be my set time. I have heard and I know. You are set, but you say, I shall call and you will answer. Lord, favor me. Are you praying at all? Zegelege logo logo. Rakata karakata. Your story is changing at this moment, child of God. This is your hour. This is your day. This is your moment. If God be God, you will see his hand in your life. If God be God, you will see his hand in your story. If God be God, speed has come. Yeah. I say your story is changing. The favor of God is setting you apart. The dew of favor is sipping into your life, soaking you. Reka toko roko toko roko to. Hey, mazeka laka laka ta. God will raise problem solvers in your life. They will help you solve your problem. If you need funds, you will get it. If you need love, you will get it. If you need guidance, you will find it. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. 
Ah, they release of problem solvers into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the favor of God, you will become wealthy overnight. God will connect you. Reka Tokoroko with golden connections. God will connect you with golden connection that will open the doors of favor into your life. Reka Tokoroko Toho. In the name of you, I see somebody opening his check to check to say, look. Tell me your vision, I will bankroll it. Tell me your dream, I will bankroll it. If that is you, God is talking to fire prayer right now. Pray and say, Lord, let it happen in my life. You are my father. You are all I need. You are all I need. All I need is a touch from God. All I need is a word from God. All I need is a favor of God. Favor me, Jesus. Favor me, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I decide I'm not going to stop pursuing you. I'm not going to stop preaching to you. Lord, oh God, I will not be ashamed of what you can do for me. No, no, I will not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Favor. Favor is my portion. In the name of Jesus, put your hands on your head. I prophesy favor. 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 Receive favor of God. The dew of favor upon your life. Your story is changing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, I give you praise. In the name of Jesus. While you are still praying, I want to pray for somebody. You're watching me right now, or maybe you are even in this house. You, you are not born again. You have not met Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You have not accepted Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is the unspeakable gift of God. Jesus is the doorway to, to God. Yes, he said no one can come to the Father except through me. Yes, and the Father wants to give you favor, but you need to pass through the door. Jesus said, I am the door of life. I want to give you an opportunity to connect with him. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right where you are, you can call upon God. You can call upon his name and say, God, save me right now. So let me say, let us pray this prayer together. Say, Lord, I call upon your name today. I ask you to save me. I am a sinner, but I ask you to forgive me my sin. I come to you. I have despised you, ignored you. But right now, I have come to a realization that you are all that I need. So I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sin. And I know you rose again for my justification. So I surrender my life to you from today. I give you praise, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If you said that prayer with me, Right now, it means you just got born again. It means your sins are forgiven. Now you are a child of God. Welcome to God's family. I rejoice with you. Let me pray with you right now. Let me pray with you right now. Father Lord, I pray for this person. That Lord, your grace that saved this person, let that same grace keep him or her in the name of Jesus. I pray for this person for grace to live for you in the mighty name of Jesus. May your favor begin to flow into the life of this one in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, congratulations. I rejoice with you, my beloved brother, my sister. Congratulations. Please do me a favor. Let me know you said that prayer. You can inbox me on Facebook or you can email me. You know, my email address is info at hoffan.org. That's I-N-F-O at H-O-F-F-A-N.org. H as in holy, O as in omega, F as in faith, F as in faith, A as in uh, alpha and as in new dot org let me know you said that prayer why do i need that? i want to send some materials to you that will help you in your work with god and then number two i want to keep praying for you i want to keep praying for you and if you want me to help you to you know grow up in this work you can email me let me hear from you. anywhere you are in the world just email me let me hear from you and god will bless you in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you father i give you praise yes if you look at the top or bottom of this broadcast, you can, you, you're going to see that link or that email. Let me hear from you. But I want to pray for somebody here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the doors of favor are open into your life. Amen. You are watching me right now in the name of I pray for uncommon favor. And, and grace to be persistent in seeking God comes upon you right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every tragedy in your life is stopped right now. In the, the difficult, the hardship in your life comes to an end right now. The favor of God is going to shoot you high from today. You're going to begin to climb high, go further and faster in your life. Your mission will be easily accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive that favor. If you are sick in your body, I pray for your healing right now. The Lord heal you. The Lord Jesus makes you whole. Receive healing in your body. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. God, just heal somebody right now. I think it's, it's, it's your arm or chest from your chest and arm area. God, just heal you. You have a pain on your chest stroke arm. Yeah, but God just healed you Amen. right now. Receive your healing Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Thank you Father. Okay. Yes, and somebody has been suffering excruciating stomach ache. God said, I should let you know, is healing you right now. Amen. That pain goes Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank I give you praise. Amen. I give you glory. Thank you, yeah, somebody's coming out of depression. Amen. Depression, yes. Amen. You thought nobody cared, but God is telling you, I care. Amen. He cares for you. Amen. He loves you. He's your Father. Amen. Go to Him. That's what you need. Oh, I hear you clearly in my spirit. You have been frustrated because men have turned you down. They didn't show any, you know, regard for you. Yeah, they're not obligated to you, Amen. but God is committed to you. you God Father. is committed to you. Thank he said, even though your father, mother forsake, he said, I will take you up. I will take you up. God is taking you up right now. Receive that in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. Thank you, mighty God. I give you glory. Wave your hands and give him praise. Clap your hands and give him glory. Shout and give him honor. Hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. Thank you. God is dependable. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yes, we give him praise. We give him praise. Oh, yes, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Are you excited? Amen. Yes, your favor is flowing right now. Amen. It will never, never stop in the name of Jesus because God is the one that opened it and no man can shut and he said he will arise and have mercy on you for the time to favor you and i has come in amen. jesus name so i say my time has come my time has come my time for favor has come in jesus name amen. praise god all right before we go today i want to i want us to you know take this opportunity and give god a good offering the bible says we should honor the lord with our substance and with the first fruit of all our increase, so shall our barns be filled with plenty. How many people want plenty? Amen. Now it's time to queue for your plenty, and you, our presses shall burst out with new wine. Yes, all your efforts shall produce new dimension Amen. of receiving in the name of Jesus Christ. God has a thousand and one ways to bless you. Don't limit God's blessing and channel in your life. So we, we're going to take our tithes. Your tithe is ten percent of your income. It is holy and set apart to God. So let's pay our tithe today, and then also we're going to take our today. We take the building offering. Oh yes, God's about to build for you, Amen. give you a miracle home, a debt-free home. Amen. So give towards the building. Whatever you make happen for God, God will make happen for you. Amen. So so towards the building, and then believe God for a debt-free home. You know, move into your home, and you know everything will go well for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Or you want to start a career, a business, whatever it is, so towards the building and tie your faith around it. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. If you are going to give your offering online, if you go to our website, hoffan.org, that's H-O-F-F-A-N.org. H as in holy, O as in omega, F as in faith, F as in faith, A as in alpha, N as in new, dot org. Click the give button. We have different uh, options by which you can give. You can give by Cash App, by Zelle, you know, PayPal. And text to give, text to give. You can give by text to give. If you want to give by text to give, text the, num the amount you want to give to 770-659-7753. Uh, 7713, I beg your pardon. 770 Text the amount you want to give to that number. 
then you're going to get a text but fill your fill out the information then subsequently what you want to give you don't have to be typing all those things just text the amount and it will be it will be done easily for you amen, amen. also you can give by uh, cash app the number six seven eight two nine four six four nine four give and it shall be given unto you good measure press down shaking together running over shall god cause men to give to your bosom so as you give expect god to give back to you so we're going to take our tithe our building offering and then our worship offering praise god so i indicate what you are giving for and then if you have a vow our anniversary offering whatever give it you have a pledge sow it and then just indicate if you are giving online let us know what it is for if you can't indicate, then just to give and not, don't worry, God will still bless you. You know, we, we were here today. God that sees in the secret will reward you in the open. Amen. Amen. All right. Any titles in the house? Anybody paying tight? Please stand with your tight online in house. Please stand and lift it up. I'm going to pray for all the offerings at once, but I'm not going to call them, you know, uh, itemize the prayer. Father, Lord, I pray for everyone paying tight today. Yes. I ask, oh God, that Lord, you bless your children as they bring their tithe into the storehouse. Yes. Let there be meat, oh God, in your house. I pray also that the windows of heaven over their lives be open. Yes. Pour out blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Rebuke the devourer for their sakes. Yes. Let harvest meet harvest in the life of every tither. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless them with ideas, Amen. creativity. Let their creativity oh god heavenly father be released Amen. in the mighty name of jesus christ let their potential be unleashed Amen. let them be energized in their life we thank you father i also want to pray for everyone giving towards the building offering lord what can we build for you we know that we're sowing this is because you want to build for us you want to do something in our life so i pray for everyone giving towards the building offering Lord, I pray that I give everyone a death free home. Amen. Those believing God for their homes, open the door to, for their homes. Those in their homes, Lord, pay off the mortgages Amen. supernaturally by your favor Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, those having careers, businesses, build it for them. Those who want a home, a family, you know, uh, not physical, but a family, a relationship, build their relationship yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank Lord, we know that every house is built by some man. But you are the one that built all things. So, Lord, let everything that needs to be built, in, build it for us. Build our lives, build our destinies. Amen. Build our careers, Amen. oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus Thank Christ. You, and for every offering today, I pray everyone giving the worship offering, let it come back to us, oh God. Good measure, press down. Shake it together, running over cosmos to give to our bosom. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you.